Hey everyone, this is Chris. And Lorenzo. And welcome to our Best of Saturday series. Now that we have hundreds of episodes, we get a lot of listeners asking us where to start. So we'll be selecting some of our most popular episodes to share each Saturday from our years of podcasting. We hope you enjoy it. No role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, on today's episode, I kind of want to talk a little bit about work-life balance. Hmm. Recently in California, there was a, a court ruling that said that employers must pay employees for the time that it takes them to do any closing duties after they clock out. And so just to give an example, in California, what would happen or in, in anywhere, what would happen is, let's say an employee does all their work and whoever that closing person is at that location or that store, or whatever, they clock out and then they walk to the front of the store, they type a code in for an alarm, they close the door and they turn the key and lock it and then and then go home. And mm -hmm. so arguably they are on the clock for one to four or five minutes, uh, depending on what that what that process looks like, but but they're not being paid for it. And, you know, there there is a, you know, kind of a, a long held kind of a, a, a rule called the de minimis rule, which says that employers aren't required to pay people for, uh, you know, minuscule amounts of time that are really hard to track. So a good example okay. of that would be, let's say an employee is at home and a manager has a quick question that the employee is the only one who can answer. And they call and say, hey, do you, did this customer came in or whatever? What, you know, did you talk to them? Yeah, I did. And, and the phone call is 30 seconds long. It's unlikely that an employee would turn in a time clock for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that rule has kind of been used to apply to a lot of things that employers will do that really, it's not about they don't want to pay the employee for the work. It's about the time and effort it would take to put the processes in place to ensure they got paid. And that's that's more what it is. I don't, no employer out there is like, oh, you know, I, we can't afford to pay them for that three minutes. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's it's more about just like, it's a, it's a hassle. It's a hassle to have to have those systems in place. And so there are a lot of places where the courts are stepping in and saying, you have to do this. And and, it, and it's permeating other areas too. But I, I think this is a leadership issue. I think that, that, that in a lot of places, leadership rears its head and either in a positive way or a negative way as far as how this goes. I mean, are you, are you starting to see this in, in your professional life? Are you starting to see the, the you know, the, the kind of permeation of this or what, what have you noticed as far as how this is impacting your employees? Yeah. Well, first of all, if this new law is coming to effect, I wonder what, like, is there a statute of limitations? Because um, I closed a lot of buildings over a lot of years. <laughs> oh, you're owed, you're owed millions, yeah. man. You know? Yeah, I was about to say. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm just doing quick math, you know, a couple closes a week over the course of 10 years. I'm at least owed $84.37. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Before taxes. Life yeah, before taxes. Yes. Uh, but uh, no, I, it, it is, it's really interesting uh, because absolutely – um, it's something that uh, is discussed quite often. And, and I think what you're talking about and in, in where there has to be a lot of leadership conversation is that there is kind of this gray area. Is, uh, what is, you know, a minimal amount of time? You know, uh, is it a phone call? Is it a text message nowadays? A lot of text messaging going on back and forth where, you know, you can answer a question quickly, but then the thread is still there. And then, you know, like it's it's easier, it's more tempting to communicate with people effectively. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, you know, uh, when it is maybe a leader and an hourly employee, is that different than between a leader and a leader? You know, you know, I, I've even mentioned this in, in my own youth and growing up, uh, in the Detroit area with unions and like, you know, the, the necessity for protecting the worker. Um, I think we've gotten to a point now though, with laws like that, where, okay, so now we have to close, you know, pay people for the amount of time for a closing shift. Well, is that an estimate, you know? Does it take somebody longer to close than somebody else? You know, is somebody doing silly stuff like I used to do, which is like stacking up all the shopping carts in between the rolling gates so that the opening manager pops the first gate open, has a minute to turn off the alarm, <laughs> has to crawl over 30 carts to get to the second yes. gate? Like, yeah, that took me a little bit longer than four minutes. So, like, should I get paid for the extra 15 minutes that it took me to create the maze? <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know that it helps. Like, I think in theory, 
I understand it where you can say like, look, over time, you know, you're, you're requiring somebody to clock out before they leave and then you have this other work they have to do. I totally get that. Um, I just think it, I personally, I think it just adds more mud to the water because you're not getting any closer to defining what that is or how long that is, or is it that you get paid, you know, an extra five minutes for every time you do a closing shift, right? Like, oh, okay. Like there's things that you can do like that. Uh, but I would agree that I think that from a leadership perspective, you just have to have, you know, open, honest conversations with your people, talk about these things, make sure they feel good about it, make sure they understand it. Um, and then that way it eliminates any of this gray area or confusion or complaining um, over time. Yeah, I, I've worked for organizations that kind of um, walk the sidelines on both ends of this spectrum. I've worked for companies that didn't didn't take these precautions. They didn't care if you had suggested that you shouldn't be working off the clock. They'd laugh at you, you, you know, or not, not literally laugh at you, but look at you like you were crazy for asking that, you know, I, I, I've been, I have worked off the clock for companies in my career because there was work I was expected to get done and it was not on the schedule, but I had to get it done anyway. So I worked and got it done. And I've worked for other companies where they are, they are so walking the line of making sure that the employee gets paid for literally every second that it, it almost interferes with the interpersonal relationships that get created in those nuanced areas. And so like the example you gave of the of putting the carts in place between the two gates and requiring the opening manager to have to like climb over carts in order to turn the alarm off in time. I'm guessing the person doing that was never like was never mad at you for doing it. They kind of rolled their eyes and it put a smile on their face and it was it was a relationship you had with them obviously. You know, that that was that you were able to define your relationship with who you knew the opening manager was and you were razzing him or her a little bit. And I'm guessing got played back the other way too, right? Absolutely. I was on the other end of many of those pranks in smoke machines in cars pretending like it was on fire while I was manager. Yes, absolutely. Like that's just fun stuff that you do. Right. And and I feel like those are the things that that define good relationships at work. If if you if you want people to be engaged and and productive, they have to feel like they are working alongside their best friends. They have to mm -hmm. feel like they are they have an emotional connection of a friendship, a camaraderie, that the reason they're doing hard work is not because they don't want to lose their job. They're doing hard work because they don't want to let their friends down. Right. And and that that's what we want from employees. And at any time something gets in the middle of that to say, oh, we're going to define what this looks like and cross every T and dot every I, the positive that happens is the employees that don't know how to stick up for themselves that would be kind of run over by the by the organizations that don't care about the employee, they are helped. Absolutely. Everybody who is not in that position, everybody who who really is looking for some type of connection or personal connection with their coworkers, I think that is hurt. And so there's a net net result of all this. And and I don't know whether it's positive or negative. I don't know that we've been on this route long enough to know whether or not the net impact will be positive or negative. Um, but again, I do think this is a leadership issue because I don't recall, I, I don't I don't see a situation in which an employee who has a fantastic relationship with their organization and their leaders, their direct bosses, a, a really um, a, a, a co-working relationship where they can say anything, they can bring issues to the to the, um, you know, vocalize issues and get feedback where where there's that kind of working relationship. I don't see those people going and suing and saying, you know what? I didn't get paid for these two minutes on the 30 or 40 shifts that I closed over the last year. And, and now I'm going to hold my company responsible for it. I don't see that. The people who I see doing it are the ones who can't stand their job. Mm -hmm. They don't like their leaders. They don't like their job. And they're like, you know what? If I'm not going to like it here, at the very least, I'm going to make sure that I get every single cent that is owed to me. And I'm not saying that, that, that those cents aren't owed to everybody. They're owed, they were owed to you when you were expected to you know, set the alarm afterwards. It's whether or not you decide to kind of cash in that card is, is where the leadership issue comes in, right? Yeah, well, and, and I would also say that it's different because many of those roles that I had, I was on salary. True. Right? So that's the, that's the other piece of it as well, right? Where um, I wasn't paid hourly, so it really didn't matter at the end of the day. So it was worth the extra 15 minutes to have some fun.
right. Uh, regardless, right? But to be, but yeah, I, I agree. I think that you know it, it is. Um, I, I can appreciate the gesture of protecting those that need it. Um, I've just personally never been in environments or work for organizations um, where it felt that way, where where I felt like you know that that like like I needed to be. Um, that clear with it, or I was owed every second of every minute. And I, I think it's, it's, it's spot on to your point of, you know, if, if the, if, if the environment wasn't good, I would have already left. You know what I mean? Like, that's just right. kind of how I see it. Like if I have to, if I have to look at it like that and be that, you know, specific in time and like that type of like, you know, counting every minute, then it's probably not a, a, a company or an organization or a team that I want to work with. Um, and I owe it to myself to change my situation. Well, then how do you, okay, so that that's great. And and you, you your personality, your upbringing, the, the collective of your experience has created this person who, if they don't like the environment, they leave. There's no arguing though, that there are employees out there that they, they don't work in great environments, but they don't feel like they have other options. They don't have the self-esteem to get up and leave, or they don't have the, they feel like they're trapped in the role they're in. They don't, they can't do anything else. It'd be a significant step back in order to do something else. Um, for, for a number of reasons, they feel like they can't just get up and leave. And they feel like they can't, uh, you know, make their situation better or that they're being taken, advan taken advantage of by their leadership. And in those situations, these laws help those people. And so how... Is there is there a way to be able to have to eat our have our cake and eat it too? Is there a way to make sure that the people who are, that fall into that category aren't left behind, don't fall through the cracks, aren't you know in in horrible environments, with also not hurting what is what is the natural result of what happens when you just allow people to kind of form relationships with their leadership? I I don't think there's a way to correct that via via laws because I think that the the people that feel that way um or or can't make the move or like like for all those things that you were talking about i think that that's just a result of bad leadership that's just what i think is like that that if they feel that way that means that there's a culture of negativity um, there's a culture where you can't speak up. There's a culture where giving feedback or voicing concerns um you know is, is not accepted and not welcome. And that has nothing to do with with more laws or more requirements um, to try to make that happen. That just equals bad leadership. Um, and and this uh, this the only way to fix that is fire bad leaders. Um, that's it. Like yeah. is, unfortunately, that's that's just that's my thoughts on that. But I don't think there's any way that a, a, a law can be implemented to require leaders to lead in such a way that people wouldn't feel that way um, or at minimum at least be able to express themselves if they have concerns and feel that they're being heard and that potentially changes could be made. Right. So, I mean, I don't know if you heard this, but recently, I think sometime this year, um, France passed a law that prohibited employers from emailing employees after hours. And I don't, I don't know what the exact after hours means. I'm not sure if it's 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. Or, or whatever it is, but they aren't allowed to email people after a certain time. And it, it stems from this belief that if you are home and you receive an email from your boss, that you might feel compelled to reply, even if it's 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night, or if you're with your family, for fear of negative repercussions, if you <laughs> if you aren't the one who who responds. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I can look back in my career. And um, I, I got done some of my some of my my best administrative work as a leader sometimes was done with my laptop while I had Netflix going and you know just sitting in bed on my laptop and and, and responding to emails. Um, I, I can I multitask like that. I know a lot of people who multitask like that. And it would put a serious um, hindrance on on my ability to lead in certain roles that I've had if I had to get those emails in between the hours of nine and five. And you know on the flip side, I've also been in, in roles where I reported to people where I got emails at odd hours and had to actually, and, and had the thought process where I said to myself, you know what, should I respond right now or should I not? And because I knew that once I responded once, it set a precedent that I was available via email anytime. And I, I usually was able to just convince myself, you know, don't do it now. Make sure that you set that precedent that this is not the, that this is not the right time. I don't mean respond back and say, hey, you know what, I'm with my family right now, don't email me. I mean, just not respond till the next day. And I, I've never met a leader. I'm not saying they don't exist. I've never met a leader 
who who would be upset at an employee not responding to an email at 11 p.m. and waiting until the next day to reply. When a leader sends an email at 11 p.m., it's not because they want a response right away. It's because they're getting done that kind of, quote, administrative work that they couldn't get in during the day. And sometimes that work trickles down through the rest of their evening. And um, and so there, it's in those situations where, again, the relationship is hurt because maybe that leader likes spending time face to face with their people during the day and not sitting in a room writing emails. You know, and, and so now if all of a sudden all those emails have to get done during the workday, it takes away from the face to face time. And so it's, it's one of those situations, again, does it does it help the few and hurt the many or or is it or laws like this needed? I think New York City is trying to propose something like this as well. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's passed yet, but but these laws are trickling in and they're, and they're getting more and more common. Yeah, I, I mean, I can in my personal how I operate, I wake up every morning, usually around five, five, thirty six a.m., get up, you know, uh, walk the dogs, uh, check email on my phone and forward emails off and send some things out. And I know that I, I think the, the interesting thing is I'm in a situation where um, I'm the only leader that actually has the ability to have work email and VPN access at home. So it's a so, moot point for you. None of the people yeah. you're forwarding it to can even see it till they get to work anyway. Exactly. Right. Um, but even if they could, like I like like that's the time because to what you were just saying is my preference is to get up, get through all those types of things, get communication out, forward things that need to be forward, you know, send some emails, ask some questions, so that when I get in with my team, I can spend time with my team, right? And you know what I mean, and and not sitting there with with a with a computer open, spending time doing all of that type of stuff because there's plenty of other things to do during the day. There's plenty of other emails, conference calls, conversations. Um, the administrative work, but if I can get some of that done previous um, or after hours per se, um, you know, then I'm gonna. That's what that's what I will do. Uh, I I don't see, you know, I, I, again I can understand uh, protecting the employees uh, from from people that abuse it, or from companies or organizations where you know it's almost a requirement. Because similar to you, like I've I've worked with people that. You know, you use certain group text messaging applications mm-hmm. and things like that, where, like, if it, it's it's constantly going, right? right? And, and and it's just like it's it's twenty four seven, nonstop, no matter what. And you know, uh, if you have the ability to mute it, you know, then great, you can check it when you can. Uh, but yeah, that that can be really annoying. That can be you know really not fun when when you're with family or on a day off or trying to get something done. Um, so I get it. Like I, I get where it's coming from. Um, I would also say, though, I think that, again, when it comes to culture and environment and a team, when you when you have a leader who is not abusing that and, and, and is respectful of people's time off and, and respectful of when they're away and, and realizes, you know, the, that uh, unless it's a, an emergency or something that's really, really necessary, that would be the only time that you would reach out. And if you do that, it's via, you know, a text message or something instead of a phone call of saying, hey, I know you're off, you know, had a quick question. If you have a few minutes or here's my question, let me know if, you know, like if you're respectful in that environment and you create that environment, um, I think that people would actually prefer to have access to things like email and text messages and information um, throughout all the time. Because then what ends up happening is that, that limited time when they're at work, they have a whole lot of stuff to get done, stuff they need to get caught up on. Uh, and stuff that's happening in real time, so it actually can cause a little bit more stress to have he- to have people get their job done if they don't have a heads up, a thought, a question, an email, or information that could be useful by the time they get into work. Yeah, there, there's, but either way, what what you're basically saying is that there is there is no one right situation for everybody, and that's mm. obvious. You know, every situation is different, and that's why the relationship between the employee and the employer. Is paramount mm-hmm. you know that's why that comes in the place everywhere and and the in the absence of the relationship the law rears its head and says this is how it's gonna go because there is no relationship in w- when there is a relationship you don't really need it and and so the bottom line basically is that ha- obviously have your employees best interests in mind whenever you're making decisions like this, know that every employee has a different definition in their head of what feels comfortable to them when it comes to work-life balance. There are employees who would look at you cross-eyed and weird if you suggested that they put in a 
a piece of paper that says, hey, I worked three minutes last night because that's how long it took me to walk to the door and set the alarm and close the door. They'd look at you like you were crazy. Mm -hmm. And then there are employees who would look at you like you were crazy if you didn't suggest it. And, and those are the extreme. Most people kind of fall in the middle and that they don't really think about it until it's brought up to them. Um, but everybody will have opinion on it if you bring it up to them. If you ask them what feels right, people will have an opinion of what feels right to them. And what feels right is what is right. That's what is right. To every single employee you have, what feels right to them is the right answer. And if you have their best interests at heart, then you will help make sure that the, you and them and the relationship lives in the place where that feels right. Because ultimately what that leads to is a higher productivity, a higher engagement, a higher level of, of, of job performance during the time that they're there. And these little items that impact it, they, ha they have major, major impact over time, but individually they mean nothing. Meaning to, to try to fight to go one way or the other when it doesn't feel right for the relationship will cause more harm than good, regardless of what feels right to the employee. I completely agree. And with that, it brings us to this episode's One Minute Hack. The One Minute Hack. Okay, for this episode's One Minute Hack, I want you to get out a piece of paper and a pen and write down every single employee who reports directly to you. And I want you to schedule time to sit down with each of them one-on-one, -on -one. five or 10 minutes is all you need. And I want you to lay this information out to them. I want you to say, this is the kind of thing that I deal with as a leader, that I, that, that I have to juggle as a leader. And I understand that your definition of work-life balance and mine might be different. They might be aligned. Um, I, what's comfortable for me is this and this and this. I would love to know what's comfortable for you. And I want you to know that whatever you vocalize here, it will never negatively impact your position here. You're standing here. I want to meet you where you are. Um, call out the elephant in the room and, and, and get some vocalization around these conversations because the worst thing that can happen is to allow employees to assume negative intent when there is no negative intent. And the best way to do that is to just call it out and say, I have positive intent here. If you feel differently, if you think something I'm doing it doesn't come off as having positive intent. We need to talk about this. Um, sometimes it's comfortable to me to send emails at 11 o'clock at night. If you happen to see them, don't worry about them until the next time you work. R respond when when you feel comfortable doing it for you. And, um, and, and that will set up the kind of the relationship to where the employee feels like you are placing a high level of importance on their work-life balance. And I know it doesn't shouldn't need to be said, but it does. No matter what you do, make sure you follow every single law in your area, state, federal, local, anything that could put your company at risk. Make sure that that becomes at least the price of admission before you even have these conversations. Yeah, I think it's a great one minute hack. And, you know, I, I as I've always kind of said before, I think transparency and, and conversation um, with your team is always the best policy. And, and I really kind of like the idea of being really specific on what that looks like and, and stating the things like, hey, just because I'm doing this, like as your leader, it's not a requirement for you to respond. Just know that it works for me. It works for my style. It works for my communication, you know, um, preferences. Um, and that's why I do it this way. So feel free to, you know, to understand that and, um, and, and respond, you know, in, in, you know, respond in a way that's reflective of the urgency of the communication, but it's definitely not a requirement. So I, I like that. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the idea is to make sure that your impact matches your intent. And I don't know many leaders who have negative intent when it comes to these, these ways of doing things, these communication rhythms, but I know plenty who have had negative impact without the negative intent. And the best way to make sure those match is to have the conversation. If the relationship is there, then, then the positive intent will be assumed um, even if the employee feels like you're, you're doing something that, that feels negative in the moment. Yep. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hack Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time.